we're going to look at dependent and independent variables. Almost always, when we look at relations between two sets of numbers, one of them is independent and one of them is dependent. The independent variable is the one that we either control or change or measure ourselves, and then the dependent variable is the one based on those changes or measurements. So you could think of it as the relationship between the input variable, that's the independent one, and the output variable, which is the dependent one. We need to know which is which so that we always graph the relationship correctly. We should always be able to write a sentence where we say, something depends on something else. That's the dependent variable that's depending on the independent variable. So for example, if we look at the traffic to a website and the money spent on search, we can control the money we spend on search. We can spend $5 a day or $10 a day or $15 a day. And so it is the traffic that's dependent on what we spend. So the traffic to a website is dependent on the money spent on search. And what I'm gonna do here is just highlight, we're gonna always make the independent variable the blue one. So in this case, it's the money spent on search, that's independent. And we're gonna always make the dependent variable the yellow one, so it's gonna be traffic to the website, which is dependent. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have the number of hours we work and the amount of our paycheck. We would all love to be able to control the amount of our paycheck directly, but it usually has something to do with the number of hours we work. So the thing we can control to some extent is how many hours we work. The amount of the paycheck is dependent on the hours worked. Again, labeling these, we would say that the hours worked is the independent variable and the amount of the paycheck is the dependent one. At this point, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and see if you can figure out which is dependent and which is independent in these last two relationships and write out a sentence showing their dependency. Okay, hopefully you figured these two out. The first one, the cost of an energy bill is dependent on the kilowatts used. We can control what we use, how many lights we keep on, how much we run the air conditioner or the heater. The cost is dependent on what we use. So the cost is that dependent variable and the kilowatts used is that independent variable. The last one, the end of day stock price, that's completely beyond our control. And so all we can do is look at the day and what the stock price was at the end of that day. So it's the time in days that is the independent variable and it's the end of day stock price that is the dependent variable. The final thing I'd like to look at here is which one we put on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. It's always the independent variable, the one we can control, the input variable that we put on the horizontal axis. So the first thing we need to do is decide of all of these pairs, which one is the independent variable. So I'm gonna ask you to pause this video again and just make a decision about which one in each pair is the independent variable. Okay, this first one's a little tricky because it doesn't seem like we can actually control either of these, but there's one that probably is dependent on the other, and that's the height of the plant is probably dependent on the amount of rain that falls. So in this case, we're gonna be the observer. Remember that an independent variable can also be something you're able to um, measure, observe. So we're gonna observe the amount of rain that falls and then see what the height of the tomato plant is. In the second example, we can control how many phones we have on our bill and the cost of the cell phone bill is going to be the dependent variable. And then the third one, the gas in a car and miles driven, we can control the miles driven but not the gas the car uses. So in this case, it is the miles driven that is the independent variable. We always put the independent variable on the horizontal axis. So we would say here this is the amount of rain 
on the horizontal axis, and therefore we would put the height of the plant on the vertical axis. And we would hope to see something like, you know, a relationship where the height of the plant would be a little bit taller as the rain goes up, but at some point it might hurt if we get too much rain, so maybe it goes down again. Okay, so the next one, the number of phones and the cost of a cell phone bill. We'll put the number of phones on the horizontal axis since that's the independent variable and the number of cell phones on the vertical axis. And this one we would expect to just kind of rise as we add plans unless there's some kind of special deal and maybe after a certain number of lines they just decide you've paid enough or something like that. Probably not. These are phone companies we're talking about. The last graph, the miles driven and the gas used in a car, that one, the miles driven, goes on the horizontal axis, and the gas used goes on the vertical axis. And we would expect that if we've gone zero miles, we've used zero gas, and it should go up at some relationship. The more miles we drive, the more gas we use. So a quick recap, we have dependent and independent variables. The independent variable is something we can control or change. The dependent variable relies on that independent variable. When we produce a graph, the independent variable goes on the x-axis and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Whenever you look at a problem that has a relationship, make sure it's the independent variable that's going on the horizontal axis you're going to have some problems when we get to later topics.